of 1917 divided the world into two ideological camps, capitalist and communist. For the next 70 years, the communists would wage a war of words and images against their capitalist enemies. The goal? To capture the hearts and minds of the Soviet masses with disinformation. To turn them against the enemy, who they said ruthlessly exploited the average citizen to turn them toward the state run by peasants and workers, which cared about their welfare and guaranteed them health, education, and a shining future. A minority party with approximately 200,000 members, the Bolsheviks in 1917 assumed the leadership of 160 million people, scattered across the world's largest continuous landmass. They spoke more than 100 languages and were, for the most part, illiterate. Masters of visual propaganda, after seizing power, the Bolsheviks produced tens of thousands of political posters. Striking pictures and stirring slogans communicated party ideology. Lenin proclaimed cinema the most important art for promoting communist ideology. The animated war for the minds of the people began with short political commercials that delivered the state's message in a clear and entertaining manner. Shown in cinemas everywhere, they encouraged people to form collective farms and join the Communist Party. They promoted the state's tailored vision of Soviet history and fanned hatred of the Americans, the British, the Germans, the Japanese, and world capitalism. Soviet people were stunned when on June 22, 1941, Nazi Germany broke the non-aggression pact signed just two years earlier, crossed the Polish border, and began a war against the Soviet Union. Немецкие полчища рвались к Москве, затаив дыхание. Слушала великого Сталина. Пусть вдохновляет вас в этой войне мужественный образ наших великих предков. Александра Невского, Дмитрия Донского, Кузьмы Минина, Дмитрия Пожарского, Александра Суворова, Михаила Кутузова. Пусть осенит вас победоносное знамя великого Ленина. Against all odds, the Soviet army forced the Germans to retreat from the USSR, ousted them from Eastern Europe, and captured Berlin. World War II would leave 20 million Soviets dead and a generation of wives without husbands and children without fathers. Germans, who had not previously been depicted in the animated propaganda films of the 20s and 30s, immediately became the ideological enemy of the Soviet masses. Сатирические. Они рождались тут же на ходу, тут же и делались, что-то принималось, что-то не принималось, показывались. Но мы жили этим делом. Мы считали себя мобилизованными, обязанными это делать. Это был заказ. Но это заказ, на который мы отвечали действительно своим творчеством. Это такое время было.
Сейчас веселым представлением я вас, товарищи, займу. Мои излишни объяснения смекнете сами, что к чему. Наполеон, ты слышишь меня? Это я, Гитлер. Слышу, Адольф, слышу. Ты знаешь, Наполеон, я хочу завоевать весь мир. Слышал, Адольф, слышал. Я пришел получить твое благословение и твой этот совет. Ох, Адольф, пока не поздно, ложись рядом со мной. фашистов змеиная злоба будь бдителен всюду поглядывай в оба О коварстве врага, будь бдителен, 
Разоблачай фашистских шпионов, разведчиков, диверсантов! Songs, documentary and feature films, caricatures and animated political cartoons helped keep high the spirit of the Soviet people. On May 9, 1945, Nazi Germany capitulated. The Soviet victory was celebrated with animation. Могучего советского народа. Слава великому полководцу земли русской! Сталину! Слава! I think there is a, some profound difference in the way the Germans are depicted and the Americans. Both are bad in those films. But the Americans are shown as bad guys. But they're still human. The Germans sometimes are shown as animals or robots. They're completely deprived of any uh, traces of humanity. Thirty years later, a new wave of anti-fascist films appeared. These films were mostly targeted at Soviet children. Their goal was to create fear that the German enemy would rise again. For Soviet propagandists, West Germany and the United States were part and parcel of the same reviled military-industrial complex. Here, the war in Vietnam becomes an extension of old Nazi ambitions.
a defeated Nazi, a wolf disguised in sheep's clothing, crosses into the American zone of divided Germany. He convinces the gullible Americans he is not a war criminal. The Americans settle him into a comfortable jail cell where he pretends to read the Bible. Guided by the spirit of Hitler, he becomes a West German politician. He attempts to facilitate a return to Germany's pre-war borders, but he runs right into the Berlin Wall. At the Communist Party's 20th Congress, Nikita Khrushchev, the new general secretary, revealed for the first time the enormity of Joseph Stalin's crimes against the Soviet people. The films of the 40s and 50s had glorified Stalin for saving the USSR from Hitler. But by the 70s, the heroes of World War II had become the ordinary Soviet soldier and the brave Soviet children. Soviet Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts wore red ties. In this still popular animated film, red ties bravely defy Nazi soldiers by hoisting a Soviet flag over Nazi headquarters. The young partisans are captured by the Nazis and the Soviet army comes to their rescue. After the war, we were raised by this animation, this beautiful, interesting Soviet animation, which gave us a lot of inspiration. You understand? We didn't have toys. We saw these films about Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, and they were our wonderful heroes because they fought fascists. We all wanted to be scouts. We called them pioneer pens. In every school, there were displays of the faces of the young children who fought the fascists and were killed, like the little violinist in this film. Airplanes come from out of nowhere, destroy his peaceful environment, and bomb his house.
When a Nazi demand he play a German song, this kid isn't afraid. here and plays our national anthem. The war left very deep scars on all of us. World War II united our country. Everyone working together won the war. In our dreams, in our books, in our films and animation, we continue to fight the Nazis. World War II left my generation without fathers and grandfathers. Vasilyok is the story of a little boy whose grandfather went to war and never came home. The boy looks for him, asks everyone. He wants to have a grandpa like everybody else. Then one day, a ship called the Vasily Petrov sails into the port, named for Vasilyok's grandfather, a hero of Second World War. For the Russian people, these are tragic stories. After 
After the Nazi defeat, Germany was divided into two spheres of influence, East and West. East Germany became the Soviet Union's staunchest ally in the ideological war against the American imperialists and the capitalist sharks. We're painting October, a Soviet East German co-production, celebrates friendship between the children of the two countries. Their drawings are animated to the sounds of a happy song merrily sung in both German and Russian.